Welcome back, ladies and gents. Oh my Allah, it's day seven of Ramadan. It's crazy how it's already been a week of Ramadan. Time flies when you're having fun. Our first segment of the day is Ramadan Talks. Today, our honorary speaker is Sabrina Diaz. She's a student at New England Law Boston, and she'll be talking to us about Ramadan. My name is Sabrina Diaz and I'm finishing up my second year at New England Law Boston in downtown where um, I'm working toward being a civil rights lawyer. I have heard about Ramadan before. Um, I have friends who celebrate Ramadan and so I've heard about it through them and what they're doing um, during that month. And then I've also taken a history of Islam class where I learned a lot more about Ramadan. And so I know that it's a time for fasting from sunup to sundown and then celebrating with friends and family over like a big meal toward the end of the day. Um, so I was raised Catholic though I'm a bit more spiritual now um, and I would say that toward probably around like Christmas is I feel like the probably most similar. Um, that's time really when like we would go to church even though we like wouldn't always throughout the year and it's really just a time for like generosity and being with friends and family and like surrounded by people that you love to celebrate. Um, yeah, so I would say that Easter is probably a holiday that's like similar in that way. Um, that was always a time for us always to um, get together and celebrate, you know, in like more of a joyous and less serious way that, you know, Christmas can kind of have sometimes. Um, we didn't like fast or anything. That's never really something that I've had to partake in. But, um, you know, it's, it is a time where we're all thankful to be together. And it's like a very, just like happy general holiday and time to get together with people. Yeah, so those are, of course, like some of the most important values of really across the board. And I think especially around the holidays when we think about being thankful and sharing with our loved ones and those around us. Um, you know, I feel like I always experience that toward Thanksgiving when it is about being thankful, but also around Christmas when everybody is just like so generous and sharing and it's about gift giving and, you know, receiving and just showing people that you're thinking of them and you know, sharing that kind of joy with them as well. Thank you so much, Sabrina, for coming on the show. Now, let's move into a corner, Ramadan corner. Introducing Kamil and Ahmed, so keep watching. Merhaba, ben Kamil'im ve bu bizim Ram Ramazan yerimiz. Burada ışıklar var, kitap var, Kur'anlarımız orada, hediyelerimiz de burada. Bu alınacak, bu da alınmış. Şurada günün sünneti, 
Burada büyük kitaplar, küçük kitaplar. Sonra burada namaz namaz şeyimiz ve bunların hepsini bitirdiğimizde hediye alacağız. Bunda Ramazan için özel şeyler, teravih, 20 rekat namaz, sahur, akşam yemeği, akşam yemeği mukabele, birisi okuyor, birisi de dinliyor Kur'an'ı, iftar, orucunu açtığım zaman ve bu bizim, bu, bu da bizim salavat kutumuz. Burada salavatlarımız var. Sonra yap, yaptık mı buraya koyuyoruz. Ve Ramazan Ramazan yerimiz böyle. What a well-designed corner that's not only useful for Ramadan, but it also looks lovely. Up next, we have Islamic history. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had made his way to the city of Medina and had already started catalyzing the solutions to many of the local disputes. Medina was home to approximately 4,000 Jews, as well as 4,500 Arab polytheists. There was a desperate need for a way for the different factions of Medina to coexist in harmony. The various factions in Medina all had come to a point where they were in search of a leader who can guide them out of the constant hostility amongst each other and bring peace to the region. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with his excellent ability to read and evaluate social situations, was able to conjure up an agreement with the various tribes of Medina that would create a secure environment and finally bring peace and harmony to the area. He, alongside contributions from the various tribes, was able to form a strong legal blueprint for different ethnic communities to coexist successfully in the form of something resembling a constitution of sorts, called the Medina Accord. The Medina Accord was drawn up and ratified in the presence of representatives of a wide range of ethnic groups. The active presence of representatives from all tribes in forming such a treaty allowed everyone to make reasonable compromises that weren't forced upon them in order to form a healthy society. The Medina Accord serves as an example to all constitutions aiming to form a just and prosperous society, especially emphasizing on the importance of diverse representation rather than a select faction domineering over others. The Medina Accord incorporated different religious laws. Issues among Muslims were to be dealt with Islamic law, while issues among Jews were to be dealt with Jewish laws. Anything regarding the interreligious disputes or the city as a whole would be dealt following the cooperatively established Medina Accord. In conclusion, the Medina Accord successfully tackled fundamental issues rooted in Medina, from security concerns to individual rights, and laid the groundwork for a just and prosperous government. A governing body capable of maintaining socioeconomic stability was formed and one of the most pressing issues of the time period and ever-present violent conflicts and inner clan hostilities were effectively eliminated. Through the constitution catalyzed by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the atmosphere established by it, Medina quickly became one of the centerpieces of the Arabian Peninsula. Over time, the Medina Accord has garnered a lot of attention from intellectuals around the world, one of them being Norwegian author Jostein Gardner stated the world is in need of understanding the Medina Accord.
All right, now, why don't we go ahead and ask our viewers a few questions that are important for everybody else to also ask themselves too. Keep watching because it's time for What Do I Know? When you hear the word Allah, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Praying namaz, reading Quran, and reciting dua. The universe and all of the things on it and out of it because he created it all and if he didn't, we wouldn't have been here. A very powerful being, like something that has a lot of power but uses it for good. The word Ar-Rahman or the most merciful. Do you love or fear Allah? I love Allah. Sometimes I love him because when I do good deeds, I think I make him proud. Sometimes I fear him because he has a lot of power. I love Allah. Of course I love Allah, and I do with my whole heart, but I also fear him as well. And this fear isn't the kind of fear that you would feel if you were to look at something like a snake, but rather a fear that's born both out of respect and love and also the fear of losing a beloved one's love. Why? What is the reason for your answer? For he is the most merciful, and when he challenges me, I can learn from the challenges and implement them in later ones. Because he loves me, and I know that he loves me because he gave me life, food, and water to survive, and he gave me the nice thing of waking up to the sun up in the morning so I could see the sun every morning. Like saying I'm not Muslim, that could take your religion away and your connection with Allah. Because when we unconditionally love someone, we show respect towards them in an equal amount, like we do with Allah. So my love for Allah is very much like this. And a person who worries about losing a loved one will act cautiously because of that fear. So my fear of Allah shows both my love and my respect for him. I love hearing your answers to these questions, but don't forget guys, it is always a good idea to check up on our Islamic knowledge with a mentor or expert. Up next on Music of the Day, Yavuz Demirbash will be playing Eirast Ilahi. Hello, my name is Yavuz Demirbash. I am 15 years old. I am gonna be playing the Picked Tambur. Its roots are from Sumerian Anatolia and it is made from walnut tree and has four double strings. And now I will be playing a Sufi song from the Makam of Rast. <laughs> Thank you. 
I love the unique shape of these guitar-like instruments. Okay guys, now let's take a visit to Meshit and Nabawi. Meshit and Nabawi is the second holiest mosque in Islam the second largest mosque in the world after the Masjid al-Haram in Mecca. It is a resting place of the Prophet Muhammad. It was built by Prophet Muhammad himself next to the house where he settled after his migration to Medina in 622 AD. It was an open-air building with a raised platform for the reading of the Quran. In 622 AD, when the Prophet peace be upon him arrived in Medina with his companions, the construction of the Masjid in the Vive started. As a result of hard work, the construction of the mosque was completed in 15 months. At the time, the mosque was built on an area of 60 by 70 cubit with no ceiling. The walls were as tall as a man, made from mud bricks on a stone foundation. The mosque had three doors and a chamber made out of date palm trunks lined up in rows. There was also a raised platform for the reading of the Quran. Although the name of the Masjid Nabavi is not mentioned directly in the Quran, it is narrated that the phrase, mosque built on Taqwa from the first day, refers to Masjid al-Nabivit. Since the Kaaba was not yet designated as the Qibla, its Qibla was towards Jerusalem. So, what was the function of the Masjid al-Nabivit? As a masjid, after seven months of building Masjid al-Nabivit, the first azan was recited by Bilal al-Habasi. After it was constructed, people of Islam started praying all together in every daily prayer. As a school, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, requested for a place built called Sufa next to Masjid and Nabavir. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, placed students with no family and status into this building so that they can study and get educated. These students got classes from the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the morning at Masjid and Nabavir and used the Sufa building to relax and rest. All students who got educated there were assigned as teachers. As a hospital, Muslims who got injured during the war were taken to Masjid in the Bavit and they got treated there first. As a parliament, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, separated a place so that he and Sabahas can hold meetings about administrative and martial activities. As a guest house, Prophet Muhammad entertained the head of the states and embassies in Masjid in the Bavit. People of different religions were able to worship freely in Masjid in the Bavit. Also, people who didn't have a place to go and single people who didn't have family members stayed in Masjid al until they found a place to stay. Every year, millions of Muslims from across the world visit the Masjid al and his tomb. The visit embodies their love and respect for the Messenger of Peace, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and their Sahabas.
Did you know that it's the biggest mystery in the world after Masjid al-Haram? I hope one day Allah will allow us to visit it. Ameen. Now, oh. I have a question for you. Do you like waffles? Yeah, we like waffles. Do yes, we like waffles. Let's see how to make America's favorite breakfast on Ramadan recipes. Hi, my name is Benjamin and I'm nine years old. Today we're gonna make waffles. First, we need milk, oil, flour, egg, sugar, salt, and baking powder. Next, we're gonna put our things in the mix. First, we need to put Next, we need to put our milk in the mix. Then, soil. And our egg. Then we need to put our flour and we put our flour and our sugar, our salt. And for last, our mixture pot. And we close this up and start mixing. And when we finish mixing, we get this out and look for if it's good. Then we open this up and put our mixer in. And close it up. When our waffle is done, we get it a care of and care of because it can be hot or us. Last. We're gonna cut our fruits for the golf. First, we take our banana and open it up. We take a piece and cut it up. It doesn't matter if you do fruits that's not like bananas, or blueberries. You can get your own fruit. And we cut our, we cut it, then we put it in. Then we get our chocolate. Put it in. 
now let's put our fruits in it. And we put our sauce. And ta-da, our waffle is ready. Enjoy and happy Ramadan. It's been a long minute since I had a waffle. I love waffles with Nutella and strawberries. What's your favorite kind of waffle? Let me know down below. Now to another blissful segment of the day with loads of knowledge. Quotes of the day. Let's go. The revelation angel Gabriel used to repeat the recitation of the Quran with the Prophet, peace be upon him, once a year during the month of Ramadan. So Ramadan is also considered a holy month in the Quran. To imitate the sacred atmosphere of reciting the Quran every Ramadan, especially in Turkey, people recite the whole Quran to each other in mosques and houses. This recitation for the whole month is called Mukabila. In this way, the style of the reciting of a uh, prophet and angel Gabriel is imitated, so sacred ambience is experienced. Allah Almighty said in the Holy Quran, when the Quran is recited, listen to it attentively and be silent, so you may be shown mercy. Abu Huraira reported the prophet as saying, no people get together in the house of the houses of Allah, that is, a mosque. Reciting the Book of Allah and learning it together among themselves, but calmness, Sakina, comes down to them. Divine mercy covers them from above, and the angels surround them, and Allah makes a mention of them among those who are with him. A house where Quran is decided shines a light at the spirits and angels of heavens the same way a star shines bright in the sky. Hey guys, do you see what Sarhat is doing right now? Sorry guys, I got caught up with notes. I'm definitely gonna need those just in a bit for Kahoot. Hope you're taking notes too if you really want to win. Drop a notebook emoji if you take notes. Neval, where do you think we're flying today? Hmm, maybe somewhere in Africa. Let's find out on uh, Ramadan along the world. Stick around to find out. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. My name is Abu Bakr Mayrambi and I am from Nigeria. Now I'd like to tell you a little about Nigeria and also Ramadan in Nigeria. That is the holy month of Ramadan and how it is observed in Nigeria. Now first of all, Nigeria is situated in the western part of Africa that is close to Ghana and also close to Guinea-Bissau and Senegal. And also Nigeria has a population of more than 200 million people. And out of these 200 million people, 
about 90 million are Muslims. That is, a little over 90 million people observe the fast in the holy month of Ramadan each year. And these 90 people, out of these 90 people, a lot of them are situated in the northern part of Nigeria, which is where uh, Muslims are mostly uh, dominating the part of Nigeria, that is the northern part of Nigeria. Now, in the holy month of Ramadan, uh, especially in my country, the atmosphere changes. Once it's Ramadan, automatically you know it's Ramadan. Before the coming of Ramadan, a lot of people are getting prepared for the month of Ramadan. You see people becoming more and more religious. They are religious as well, but you try to put in extra effort once the month of Ramadan comes and they increase their ibadah or they increase their worships. When you go to the mosques, the mosques are always packed in Nigeria. They're always packed. They're full. But once it's Ramadan, you see even more people, both the men and the women, try as much as possible to get the double rewards that have been promised to them in this holy month of Ramadan. They sit in the mosques. They recite Quran. And even those who are not in the mosques, in their places of work, uh, in their places of relaxation, they, they sit down, they read the Quran, uh, you see people uh, supplicating, doing their dhikr, probably with their digital tasbihs or other tasbihs, uh, tasbihs that they have at work as well. And also, uh, we sit in the mosques and we listen to tafsir, that is the interpretation of the holy book, that is the holy Quran. Now, in Nigeria, uh, currently, especially in the north, the weather is very, very hot. And we start our sahur, that is we begin our fast, around 5 a.m. in the morning, just before the rising of the sun. And we break our fast around 6.30 to 6.45 p.m. in the evening, which means we approximately fast for 12 to 13 hours in Nigeria. And then, once it's time to break the fast, we usually break our fast the usual way, the Sunnah way, that is with dates and water and also with some of our traditional foods. And uh, Thank you very much, Abu Bakr, for sharing your Ramadan from Nigeria. We love seeing the great responses from you guys. Comment down below what you're thankful for to see your comment on the screen. Stay tuned for Seeking Gratitude. How do you seek gratitude? Please send your photos and videos to seeking gratitude at skyacademynj.org. Yeah. We're going to randomly pick out comments and read them over the next couple days. But for now, time for Surah of the Day Surah Al Qariya. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Al Qari'a Tum Al Qari'a Wa Ma Al Raka Ma Al Qari'a Yawma Yakunu Al Nasu Kal Farash Al Mabuthuth Wa Takunu Al Jibalu Kal Rahn Al Manfush Fa Amma Man Thakulat Mawazinuhu Fa Huwa Fi Aishat Al Radiyah وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُمُّهُ هَاوِيَةٌ 
وما أدراك ما هي نار حامية The striking calamity. What is the striking calamity? And what can make you know what is the striking calamity? It is the day when people will be like moths, dispersed, and the mountains will be like wool, fluffed up. Then as for one whose scales are heavy with good deeds, he will be in a pleasant life. But as for one whose scales are light, his refuge will be an abyss. And what can make you know what that is? It is a fire, intensely hot. Thank you for the recitation. Now let's open our hands for a dua with Seneha Sarabashak. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina muhammadu wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Our Lord, the satisfier of all needs, bestow wisdom on us and make us among the rightest. Bless us with honorable mentions among later generations and make us one of the inheritors of the garden of bliss. O oh Allah, make the best part of our lives, the last parts, the best deeds, our last deeds, and the best day, the day we meet you. Our Lord, help us and do not give help against us. Grant us victory and do not grant victory over us. Plan on our behalf and do not plan against us. Guide us and make the right path easy for us. Grant us victory over those who act wrongfully towards us. O oh Allah, make us grateful to you and accept our repentances. Wash away our sins and please answer our prayers, for you are the only one that can. Wassalu wassalam ala Sayyidina Muhammadu wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. May Allah grant our prayers. It is now time for the long-awaited Kahu competition. Good luck, everybody. Now presenting Bilal. The floor is yours. <laughs> The ID is the code ID is three five eight three seven six three. Just like yesterday and for the rest of the month of Ramadan, we'll pick two random players on top of the five that win. Two random players will be selected to win a prize as well. So if you're first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or those two random players, you'll also win a prize. And I'll tell you which number those are in about 20 seconds. If you are already on and you're waiting for us to begin, you might as well go and like the video and subscribe as well. I mean, why not, right? You got time. We'll begin in five seconds. But before we do that, those two random players are the 141st winner and the 317th. Whoever comes in 141st and 317th will also win a prize on top of the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth place winners. So if you win, send your screenshot to Kahoot at skyacademynj.org. 
and don't waste your time with bots will get kicked out right away automatically and obviously you won't win a prize we'll start in three two one day seven it's already been a week Verse of the day, when the Quran is recited, finish the verse. When the Quran is recited, listen to it attentively and be silent so you may be shown mercy. Yeah, yeah, then first place, high in second. Sadex so Rock, third, Sidit, third, fourth, Rayo in fifth. Second question multi select, choose more than one option, and it's a 2,000 point question. What was Masjid and Nabawi used for during a prophet? Peace and blessing be upon him's time. Is tricky I am not sure but it was used as a shelter for those who had nowhere to go it was used as a guest house for heads of states and it was used for people of different religions for, for people of different religions they were able to go and worship there in a freely in a free manner so <laughs> Veda in first place Tahini in second is often in third Fazal in fourth Nai is in fifth place Satan from Beth is up 280 places. Nice. Third question. A house where Quran is recited shines a light of the spirits and angels of heavens like... Like what? Look, I made it easier. There's three options instead of four. Answer is a star shines bright in the sky. A house where Quran is recited shines a light. The spirits and angels of heavens like a star shines bright in the sky. Veda Asim first, Tahini second, Zafin in third, Zainab in fourth, Naid is in fifth. But I just want to remind you that you can only be in the top five two times during the entire month of Ramadan. So we ask you if you've already won twice, please try to stay away from the top five. Fourth question, most select hadith of the day. What happens to people who come together in a mosque to recite the Quran? Correct answer, the angels surround them and the divine mercy covers them from above. They may learn how to recite the Quran and they obviously recite the Quran and they may pray. That's up to them. But the Hadith said the angels surround them and the divine mercy covers them from above. Tahini is in first place now. Naid is in second. Ahmed in third. That one is in fourth. I'm not going to say it. Amit is in fifth place. Fifth question. What was on the menu today? I watched this video three times and each time my mouth got watery. 
it was so delicious to just watch. Waffle bowls. That talented friend of ours, that was a delicious recipe. Nice banana with some Nutella. Though I would I would add more Nutella on there. That not enough. I think I would put the entire Nutella on there. The entire scoreboard is exactly the same, so we'll just move on. Sir of the day, Surah Al Qariya warns us of what event? Sir warned us of Judgment Day and the two groups that will be divided into, if you remember. Fourth is Emir, fifth follow. Okay, okay, okay. Seven questions. True or false? The name of Masjid and Nabawi is directly mentioned in the Quran. False. Wow, this was a trick question, wasn't it? Someone in the chat yesterday said, if this question is true, then all the true and false questions are true. So this might be true too. No, I tricked you guys and it is false. It is not mentioned directly in the Quran. Though it does say something about a mosque built on taqwa. Scoreboard is exactly the same. Let's continue. Multi-select question, a 2,000 point question, double points. The Constitution of Medina let people of all backgrounds inhabit the region together and what? Choose more than one. I just gave you guys a whole hint to get more points. allowed freedom of thought and speech and allowed people to follow their own religion without fear of pressure before we move on to our last and final question um, just to remind you if you're in first second third fourth fifth 141st and 317th place you will also win a prize so send your screenshot to kahoot at skyacademynj.org if you won previously during the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and even today, uh, check your inbox. You probably received your prize already. Scoreboard changes. Wow. Ahmed is in first place. Nine in second. Amin in third. Sam in fourth. Satan from Beth is in fifth. Final question. How many Muslims live in Nigeria? Ninety million Muslims live in Nigeria. If you listen to Ramadan talk, Ramadan on the world, it's a question. 
Amy is in third place. Second place goes to Nahid. First place goes to Ahmed. Congrats. Let's see who's fourth and fifth. And don't forget, if you're 141st or 317th, you also win. So you're fun in seminar as well. Congrats. Congratulations, everybody. Even if you aren't a winner in the game, you are winners in our hearts. Neymar, I just got some bad news. Did you know that 57% of our viewers are still not subscribed? Oh my Allah. What are you guys doing? Just subscribe. It's literally free. It's free, guys. After you guys do that, unfortunately, we have come to the end of another episode. But on the bright side, it's almost time to eat. I hope everyone enjoys their iftar and will be waiting for you guys tomorrow. Same place, same time. Peace out. Thank you.